Matt here with Atlas Precision Consulting. In today's video, we're going to talk about the up to replenishment method, which is uh, one of the most common advanced forecasting methods to use in P21. Um, I've already done some videos on net stocks and some other things that play into here, so I'll just kind of go over them briefly. Uh, but essentially, an up to item is broken down into four calculations. You have a net stock calculation, order point, order quantity, and then there is technically a calculation in the required units if you are using a purchasing unit of measure that may have a, a different unit size or you know it's it's a case of something. Uh, net stock I've already done a whole video on, um, so you can guys go check that out. Order point is you've probably seen me do videos that talk about things that play into this uh, lead time, review cycle, and safety stock. Those come heavily into the calculations for order point. So essentially, and I'll just kind of read it from left to right. Uh, you know, our daily usage, that is your forecast usage for the next, you know, month divided by however many calendar days of the month you're running it in. So whether it's March, you're getting 31 days. If it was February, you're getting 28 days. That's where your daily usage comes from. Uh, usage factor in this screen under the item master inquiry is just going to default to one. Uh, same with the lead time. Uh, when you're running Porg, you can kind of play with those numbers a little bit, but that's that's a whole nother conversation. Uh, lead time days, that is our calculated lead time, uh, or it could be a published lead time on the item. Again, I've done another video on lead time. Check that out. Review cycle, uh, that's how often you're looking at this item or product line. Uh, I've done a whole video on that, on, on, on where you can set that and how that controls that. Uh, safety stock for this item, it's just set to 30 straight days. Um, again, uh, there's another video out there on safety stock. So all it's going to do is it's going to add my lead time days, my review cycle days, and my safety stock into one number. So it's going to add my 45 plus 14 plus 30, and it's going to multiply it by my daily usage. Um, so that's where I get this 376 calculated order point. Now you'll notice it moves down here and there's this max uh, calculation. What this does is you can see there's this hundred next to it, just the item order point. That's actually the min. Um, you can still set a manual order point or a min on an item. And what it's going to do is it's going to take the max. It's going to take the greater of these two numbers. In this case, it happens to be my calculated order point. But for some reason, if my calculated order point had come back with 56, it would move uh, 100 uh, into my order point and it would go further down to the calculation. Um, order quantity, we got two different things that play in here. We have our ABC class, which uh, I've done a video on that as well, uh, where it affects the periods to supply, which is this field right here. Essentially what it says is, hey, my period usage, which again, remember, that's my forecast usage. Uh, I want a minimum of three periods or three months. And so it's gonna take that 130, it's gonna multiply it by three, and it's gonna give me that 390, 393. Over to the right, uh, you see that, that order point that we got above, which happens to be the calculated order point. Now in this case, you'll see that max again. What that max is saying, hey, whether my order quantity uh, based on is is going to be based off of my periods to supply or it's going to be my order point whichever two are the greatest number is what's going to move down uh, just below that which in this case it happens to be the three month supply so you see the 393 moves down to this you know little square here and to the right you'll notice it's going to subtract my net stock which again the net stock is up above and then you have to look all the way back over to the left to get that quantity that I need, which is that 250. And I and, and so that's our three calculations. The net stock, which again, we've done a whole nother video on, order point, uh, order quantity. And I told you there's a chance for a fourth calculation, which in this one, there's not because my uh, required units is in each or EA. Uh, but if I did have a case of eight eaches uh, that was my preferred purchasing method, the unit size, it, this number would be divided by the unit size, which would tell me what my um, required units are. Um, so if I had 10 in a case, um, I would actually be tell, being told to order 25 cases. Um, again, this is a little bit more complicated than min-max, 
but they do a really good job of breaking down the formulas on the screens. Uh, and you just need to understand how lead time, how review cycle, how safety stock, and even how the manual uh, min order point plays into this calculation. And of course, net stock, which is the base of all of these purchasing methods. Um, again, this one's a little bit more in depth. Um, I probably have about a million conversations a month with, with customers about this stuff. Uh, so if you guys want more information like this, uh, you guys can uh, like this video, comment down below. If you've got a different video you want to see, put a, put a question or comment down below. Make sure you like and subscribe. And, and if you need some in-depth uh, help with this stuff, you know, contact Atlas. That's what we're here for. Thanks, guys.